So I hope everyone can hear me. Okay. We hear you very well. So I'm going to... Okay, great, thank you. So uh, how, how much time do I have? Uh, you have 35 minutes plus questions. Okay. So I'll be talking about uh, super integrable systems. And uh, in some sense, this is more like an advertisement talk because uh, the, notion, <clears throat> the notion is not new, but somehow it wasn't really, uh, uh, it wasn't really used a lot uh, in the sense that, um, yeah, I just want to, uh, to review this uh, notion of super integrability, which is the probably correct way to think about it is some kind of refinement of Leoville integrability. And um, um, so, and we'll give some examples. So first, I want to congratulate Uber, uh, who is 60. So, uh, you know, uh, I'll be uh, affiliated for the next uh, number of years with Tsinghua University at Beijing. So, uh, Uber 60 is an important middle point. Uh, in life, it's you know people live until 120 years, as we know. So 60 is midway. So it's it's the point where you know you start to feel true freedom. Because I'll explain it later. Okay. Uh, is it, is it the age to go to Tsinghua? <laughs> It's, it's related. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, so sorry. congratulations. So, so here's the plan. Uh, the plan is very modest, so I will explain what uh, superintegrability is. Uh, in classical Miltonian mechanics will give some examples. And most likely, I will have no time to explain how to construct superintegrable systems on moduli spaces of uh, flat connections on the surface. So, uh, so let's start from the very beginning. So super integrable systems. There are several names to this uh, type of dynamical systems in Hamiltonian mechanics. Um, it's known as degenerate integrability, uh, non-commutative integrability. And I kept using uh, degenerate integrability for the reasons that we will see at the end uh, of uh, this presentation, uh, basically because uh, corresponding quantum integrable systems, they are highly degenerate. So non-commutative integrability, it's because you have the uh, integrals of motions that are not Poisson commutative, <clears throat> but somehow the most uh, unnatural name got stuck and uh, it's, so it's super integrable systems now. So they go back to works of uh, Pauli, uh, Fock, I forgot to mention uh, here, Fock uh, Senior. So then there was a, there were some examples uh, given by Smaradinsky, Winternitz. Uh, uh, there, were, there was a, uh, kind of a big transition on the mathematical side. Uh, kind of good understanding of the system came uh, with works of Nikhoroshev, who was a student of Arno. And uh, some new examples related to Lie groups uh, were constructed by Mishnikov, I mean, and people working with them. So, so here's the definition. Uh, suppose we have a synthetic manifold, so that's a phase space for a classical system. The, uh, the classical algebra of observables would be, so is a smooth uh, algebra of smooth functions on M. And our Hamiltonian is uh, an element of this algebra. It's a function on the phase space. So then uh, an important notion for uh, uh, for algebraic notion in this setting is the uh, centralizer of H in this Poisson algebra A. In other words, it's the set of all elements in A which Poisson commute 
with speech. So typically, if you have just, you know, your average Hamiltonian, uh, nothing but the Hamiltonian itself will uh, commute this with H. So uh, having non-trivial centralizers is quite a non-trivial property. So, um, for example, if this Hamiltonian is uh, Liouville integrable, then the centralizer of this Hamiltonian would be the set of uh, Poisson commutative uh, integrals of motion. But uh, it can be even bigger than, and there will be on the two n dimensional phase space, there will be um, uh, there will be n uh, maximal uh, n Poisson commuting uh, integrals, so uh, independent of this h. So this would be the level integrability. So now uh, the definition is the following. Um, Hamiltonian flow generated by H is superintegrable if uh, there exists uh, a Poisson subalgebra J in our algebra of observables uh, of rank 2n minus k. That means that there are exactly 2n minus k uh, maximal independent. Uh, Elements. So think of this as uh, algebra functions on 2n minus k dimensional Poisson manifolds. So, uh, and uh, the Poisson center of J has rank k. In other words, it contains maximum k independent functions i1, i k. And the Hamiltonian itself is in the center of this Poisson algebra. So, so this is the kind of, this is a definition of the superintegrability. This is an algebraic definition. So once again, uh, it means that uh, there are n minus two n minus k independent integrals of motions, and among them there are exactly k. Uh, maximum k Poisson commuting uh, integrals, and our integral is one. So, so algebraically, it means we have our algebra once again our algebra A of rank two m. So, it has a Poisson subalgebra of integrals of motions, conserved quantities, j of rank two n minus k. And the Poisson center of this uh, Poisson algebra has rank k. So there are exactly k Poisson commuting Hamiltonians. So these are all Poisson subalgebras in our Poisson algebra functions on the phase space. So, uh, so this, is the, this is the Poisson. Uh, Poisson algebra definition of uh, superintegrability. Uh, geometrically, it means the following. Uh, we have our symplectic manifold, M to N, that's our phase space. And we have two projections. One is the projection to 2N minus K dimensional Poisson manifold. It's called P1. And the other projection, P2, is a fibering projection uh, to some key dimensional base such that fibers of this of this projection are two generic fibers, 2n minus 2k dimensional synthetic leaves. So so once again, so so when would when this construction degenerates to the usual Liouville probability, when k is equal to n. When we have only one projection, when P coincides with B. So in this case, uh, fibers of the projection are k-dimensional uh, Lagrangian submanifolds. These are the Liouville tori. Uh, but in this case, you can see that Liouville tori will be k-dimensional uh, isotropic 
fibers of the first projection. And that's the difference between integrability and superintegrability. That Liouville Tori now will be not n dimensional, but we will know for sure that they are k dimensional, where k is strictly less than n. So let's go through this. So the you know, dynamical, uh, that's the analog of the Liouville theory for superintegrable systems. So uh, in this subalgebra of integrals, uh, we can choose various um, independent sets of k integrals. Let's choose such set. So uh, it means that on this base manifold B, we choose a coordinate system uh, corresponding to this choice of integrals. And <clears throat> the Hamiltonian flows of these integrals, uh, they generate uh, affine coordinates. Just, you know, phi1 is time for i1, phi k is time for i k, known as angle variables. But now they are coordinates on the level surfaces of integrals of motions, and we have 2n minus k of them. So on this k-dimensional level surfaces, we have affine coordinates, uh, phi1, phi k, angle variables. We have action variables, these coordinates i1, i k. And in the neighborhood of the level surface of p1, in the neighborhood, uh, in the neighborhood of the level surface of the integrals uh, j, <clears throat> we have the following uh, you know, Darbu uh, structure of uh, the symplectic form on our phase space. So this would, if, we, if we would have Liouville integrability, uh, we would only have the first part. Uh, that's the action angle part of the symplectic form. But now we have the second part. And the second part came from uh, the symplectic leaf uh, of the of the intermediate Poisson manifold. So you see, I, I said that uh, generic fibers of P2 are 2n minus 2k symplectic leaves. They are automatically equipped with the symplectic form that's comes from this Poisson manifold. And this symplectic form is the missing piece in the uh, in this uh, action angle uh, theory. So, so that's the structure of the symplectic form. And then each connected component of, just as they in the Liouville theorem, this Liouville tori, they are, they, if they are compact, they are tori. But if uh, not, uh, they are just Cartesian products of uh, lines and tori. So now, uh, if we choose a Hamiltonian from the center of J, from our Poisson commutative uh, algebra of Hamiltonians, the flow line uh, will be naturally linear in uh, this affine coordinates phi1. Sorry, this is typo. It should be k. If you want to k. So this is just as in the Liouville theory. So you can see that uh, in superintegrable systems, uh, the only difference with uh, Liouville integrability is that uh, Liouville Tori now have dimension less than m. So, so here is the you know, conclusion. So here is the Liouville integrability on the left. Uh, you can see that all you can say is that uh, in this case, um, the Liouville Tori are n dimensional uh, Lagrangian submanifolds. And you don't know whether trajectories are periodic on these n dimensional submanifolds, or maybe they spend some. Uh, smaller dimensional in Tore, you just don't know this. Uh, it's it's a kind of it's a very strong property level integrability, but still a lot of information is missing about the dynamics. For a super integrable system, you know for sure that uh, your Liouville Tore are k dimensional, so the effective dynamics is going on on a smaller uh, part of the phase space. 
And so one can measure and say that, say, suppose that you have a Liouville integrable system. That's the uh, set of integrals Jn, uh, Poisson commutative subalgebra in our algebra of classical observables. We can say that a superintegrable system on M is this superintegrable system with the uh, intermediate Poisson algebra J to N minus K and uh, its center I K. Um, we can say that it's a refinement of the system on the left if uh, the, the integrals for the superintegrable system, they include the integrals of an integrable system. So in this case, uh, we have this system of subalgebras, and uh, it's a refinement of uh, a Liouville integrable system in the following sense. So imagine that you have a, a four-dimensional phase space and a two-dimensional Liouville tori. You don't know whether trajectories are periodic or not, uh, or whether they span the, uh, the, the torus uh, some kind of, uh, in some way. Uh, but if you have a superintegrable system, uh, which is a refinement of this integrable system, then you know that all trajectories are periodic. And effectively, Liouville tori are not two dimensional, but one dimensional. So that's the, that's, that's the essence of uh, superintegrability. Uh, but a superintegrable system doesn't have to have a Liouville counterpart. It doesn't have to be a refinement of uh, some Liouville integrable system. It just can be superintegrable system by itself. And uh, it's a type of dynamical system where uh, your dynamics is constrained to some kind of very low dimensional subspaces in the phase space. OK, so, uh, so this is the refinement when it exists. Um, you know, I was so worried that uh, my talk will be very long. So I might finish earlier. Uh, I hope it's not going to be criminal. It's the end of the day. So, but uh, for this, I should not be carried away because I prepared 38 pages. And uh, of these pages, only 18, I hope, will be effective. So, uh, so here's an example that goes back to, um, well, it uh, go, goes back to Kepler. It's, uh, it's a Hamiltonian system that describes the, uh, uh, a particle uh, in three dimensions with the potential uh, source, the gravitational uh, attractive force. So, you know, everyone studied these systems in the school and the corresponding quantum uh, system. Uh, but uh, let's, let's see that it's a superintegrable system. So uh, clearly, uh, momenta uh, coordinates of this uh, vector product P of P and Q, uh, this functions Poisson commute with H. Now there is a, uh, for this, in this particular case, there is there are more integrals. There is lens vector, uh, which also Poisson commutes with H. They have the following Poisson brackets. So momenta, as they should, they uh, give this kind of SL, SU2, S, rather SO3 uh, Poisson brackets. Uh, lens vector Poisson brackets with M give, has this structure. Uh, Poisson bracket between lens components of the lens vector has a similar structure, but there is a Hamiltonian here. And Hamiltonian can use with both with momentum and with the lens vector. So if there would no, not be relations, we would have seven uh, independent functions on the six-dimensional uh, phase space, which is impossible. So there should be relations. So there are two relations. The scalar product of momentum and lens vector is always zero. And the length of the lens vector is related to the lens, uh, to the, uh, to the length of the momentum vector uh, by this relation, by this relation. So we have seven functions and two relations. 
So we have the Poisson subalgebra in the uh, classical algebra of observables of rank five. So we have only five independent functions uh, of this subalgebra. And uh, if you compute its Poisson center, you will see that it's exactly generated. It's a, it's a, it, it's a, it's a subalgebra generated by our classical Newtonian H. So, uh, so this is the superintegrability setting. And, uh, you know, geometrically, it means that we have the phase space. From the phase space, we have a projection to five-dimensional Poisson manifold. And this Poisson manifold uh, is fibered over the real line. This is the set of values of, of H. And fibers are some symplectic uh, leaves. So uh, I said Poisson manifold, and you know, by it's it's a Poisson algebra. So then, uh, by the general nonsense, we can think of this as a uh, as the algebra of functions on a five-dimensional Poisson manifold, which is what I wrote here. So this, so we we are dealing with maximally superintegrable system. Uh, maximal superintegrability is when the base space uh, is one dimensional when you have when all the will tori are one dimensional when all trajectories are periodic in the compact case in non compact case it's not true and this is a non compact case so so we have maximal superintegrability and the question is what are the fibers of this last projection so what are the symplectic leaves of this five dimensional Poisson manifold. And this is something that, uh, you know, since everyone in this room knows uh, what the hydrogen atom is, so, so some go by the semi classical limit, we all know what, should, what to expect. So for the negative uh, levels, uh, energy levels, uh, the fibers. They describe the degeneracies of the uh, energy levels. So they are coadjoint orbits for the uh, V group SO4. There is a special point, zero energy point, where the fiber is the cotangent bundle to uh, a two dimensional sphere. That's, a non that's already a non compact symplectic leaf. And then when energy is positive, there is this hidden Lorentz symmetry in the uh, in the system, and uh, it manifests itself that in the fact that uh, here the symplectic leaves are orbits of the of SO31 of the Lorentz group, Lie algebra. So this is the superintegrability uh, of the Kepler system. So now. Uh, at the very beginning, I mentioned that, uh, you know, in my mind, uh, superintegrability uh, probably should be at least secretly called degenerate integrability. So what does it mean? Uh, now let's consider the quantum system. I, I will be somewhat sketchy here, but I think this is such a well-known system that I can be sketchy and it still will be intuitively clear what uh, is going on. So let's look at the hydrogen atom. This is the quantum version of the Kepler system. And uh, in this case, the uh, algebra of observables, this is simply the uh, complex value differential operators on R3. There is the, this algebra has a subalgebra, uh, the uh, quantum version of this uh, rank five subalgebra in the classical algebra of observables. This is the subalgebra generated by quantum uh, momenta and uh, by quantum lens vectors and by quantum Hamiltonian. And again, there are two relations, the quantum version of the, what we had in the classical case. And the center, now it's an associative algebra. Uh, it has representations. Uh, it has a center. The center of this Poisson algebra is exactly generated by the Hamiltonian H. So if I would be given this lecture at the physics department for undergraduate students, they would never recognize the hydrogen atom. 
but we'll you can see that this is what it is. And so we have the superintegrability of the hydrogen atom, uh, which manifests itself in this chain of subalgebras. So what we want to do is we want to look at the spectrum of our Hamiltonian. That's what we're interested in. And we know that the spectrum uh, has four parts. There is a discrete uh, spectrum that's negative eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. There is zero uh, level, and uh, there is a continuum spectrum uh, above zero. Now, if we look at the uh, discrete spectrum, so uh, we know that uh, the eigen subspace corresponding, I mean, this constant is irrelevant. It's a combination of uh, Planck constants and so on. So uh, the this the the the, the eigen space uh, for corresponding to the eigenvalue E M is isomorphic to uh, the tensor product of two irreducible representations of S U two, um, where uh, momenta act this quantum momentum acts diagonally, so that this tensor product decomposes into the irreducible uh, sub-representations with respect to this diagonal action. And these are the orbitals of the hydrogen atom. But the beautiful thing is that this, um, this algebra uh, J hat, it acts irreducibly on this uh, on this representation simply because we also have these quantum lens vectors. So, uh, you know, I was struggling uh, when I was learning about orbitals. I mean, I can memorize these orbitals, but I never understood the meaning of the orbitals. And then as soon as I learned about quantum integrability, I understood that this is the meaning of the orbitals, just that we have this uh, decomposition. So, so now, so what, what happens in the semi-classical limit? Uh, I forgot to put the, the important constant here, the, the h squared. So E m is proportional to 1 over n squared, but there is also h squared in the denominator. So in the limit, when h goes to 0, m goes to infinity in such a way that n times h is fixed. That's the kind of macroscopic semi-classical limit. So then uh, you can see that uh, the, the eigenvalue, uh, so we, sorry, not the eigenvalue, but the dimension of the space, it's n squared. It behaves as 1 over h squared. And what is this? Uh, we have four dimensional fibers of this projection P2. And so uh, this number h to the minus 2, it's h to the minus the dimension of this symplectic manifold over 2. That's the uh, dimension, uh, that's the semi-classical asymptotic of the uh, dimension of geometric quantization uh, space. So this is, this is the, uh, uh, these are the fibers, they're clearly four-dimensional, and so this number is uh, minus two is exactly half of the dimension of the symplectic manifold. And this is the general feature of the semi-classical limit in uh, quantum superintegrable systems. So here on the left, we have the Liouville integrability. Uh, uh, Jesper, how much time do I have? I lost track of it. Well, uh... You are soon out of time, actually. Uh, like five, you're, you're five minutes or two minutes? Well, more like two minutes. More like two minutes. OK, that's, that's good. Enough. So thank you. So, uh, so this is the Liouville integrability. This is the super integrability. And uh, what do we expect from the semi-classical uh, behavior of Liouville integrable systems? Uh, the dimension of uh, joint eigen spaces of quantum integrals is stable as h goes to zero. The spectrum doesn't have to be simple. Uh, it, it can have dimension one, two, three, four, one hundred, but it's it's stable as h goes to zero. 
the dimension of joint, uh, joint eigen spaces for a super integrable system. It's, uh, it goes to infinity as h goes to zero. It behaves like h to the power minus half of the dimension of the fiber of the last projection P2. And this is the uh, typical feature. Okay, now <clears throat> I, I wanted to give two examples, the spin collage Ramoser example, uh, which is, uh, uh, well, I, I'll just mention it since I'm running out of time, there is no point. So uh, this is a well-known uh, uh, quantum system uh, and uh, it has the uh, exactly the same feature as you would expect uh, in the semi-classical limit. Uh, so, so, so somewhat less well-known system, uh, which is also uh, can be uh, obtained easily by the Hamiltonian reduction, but uh, for the, the usual spin collage of Sutherland systems, they are Hamiltonian reductions of um, uh, the cotangent bundle to the group uh, with respect to the adjoint action of the group. So, but then you can take, uh, you can take um, nth uh, Cartesian power of the group, you take the cotangent bundle to these uh, spaces, and uh, you can also do the uh, Hamiltonian reduction with respect to some kind of gauge action of the group on this space. So this is, uh, um, this is the work with uh, Jasper Stockman that uh, will be out uh, very soon. Uh, and this is the particular case, but it's a nice particular case uh, when you have the cotangent bundle to G cross G. So it, it results in this uh, truly spin integrable system. And again, the, uh, if you quantize the system multiplicities of the uh, the genesis of the spectrum are gigantic, and that's the sign of superintegrability. And then uh, one of the big points of the uh, of the development is uh, that the relativistic version of these systems, so-called, uh, related also to Rosenhardt's systems, and uh, there is a beautiful picture of how they are related to uh, moduli spaces of flat connections on the surface. I have no time to talk about this. But this is uh, this was in 2019 paper by uh, Artamonov and myself, and um, I think I should stop here. Otherwise, I will be over time. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Kolya. Uh, questions? Hey, Kolya. So, yes. tell me about dumb question. Say, quantum sine Gordon. Is it integrable? UV integrable? Super integrable? It's an infinite dimensional uh, yes. Liouville integrable system in the following sense. Uh, it's, um, I mean, classically at least. Um, you can, well, you. you yeah, you can you can pass to the action angle variables. Yes. Within some kind of analytical reasons, you can argue that it's an infinite dimensional integrable but system. I, th I thought super integrable meant somehow that there were several choices of action angle variable. Isn't it what it is like? No, so no, it's uh, super integrability means exactly what uh, I was talking about. Uh, say. Uh, when you have a non-local uh, integrals of motions in uh, quantum field theory, that's, uh, that's, well, you can interpret this as super integrability, but really uh, when, you're talking, when you're talking about quantum system, quantum super integrable system, at least according to what I was uh, talking about, super integrability means that the, the genius of the spectrum increases as h in the semi-classical limit. I see. It's that's the signature of superintegrability. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, thank Kolya again.
Thank you and a happy birthday again. Thank you. Many years to come.